I'm Sam Robinson and welcome to Behind the Screams. Today we're in the heart of London's West End in Piccadilly, discovering the secrets in the basement of the Trocadero Centre. Now let's go behind the scenes of the Passenger Tower, one of the UK's newest scare attractions. Well, a scare attraction, or as they're more commonly known, particularly in America, a haunted attraction, is a live theatrical experience in which an audience, usually a small group of guests, move through a populated area, populated with effects such as smoke, sometimes lighting effects, strobe lights, even smells sometimes, and most importantly, live actors. And as they move through the experience, there is a storyline or a narrative which is imparted both from the actors and the effects, but also the architecture of the attraction itself. But the key element is that all all of these effects are supposed to scare the audience, but with scaring them, they have fun, and that's the key. Scare attractions are frightening, but they're fun at the same time. The Passage of Terror, or Passage del Terror as it was originally known, is a two-part horror walkthrough attraction, vastly compromising of a short HD 3D film before heading deeper into the shadows where the terror is really amped up. Here, groups of visitors, or patrons as they are known in the industry, are sent into the passage, where a series of rooms and sets themed to some of the most famous horror movies in existence are laid out before them. Now it's only fair that before we go behind the scenes, I have to experience the attraction by myself. I'm incredibly nervous, but I'm going to have to brave it. But before we do that, here are some trivia facts. The Passage of Terror made its opening debut in 1984 and has now become locations around the world such as its original location of Balbo, Blackpool, Sevilla, Orlando, Cancun and now finally here in London. The show starts with a short HD 3D film in a dark cinema. The film is started manually by a button once all the guests are locked inside. The 3D effects work by projecting two images over the top of each other. When viewing the film while wearing the 3D glasses, it directs each image to a separate eye, making the scene look three-dimensional. The film was directed by Nacho Vigalondo. The script was written by the attraction and filmed by an external company. The ending of the film then semi-ties in with the second half of the attraction to provide the first live actor of the scare attraction. The Passage of Terror, containing 15 live actors, means you're not just watching the horror film, you're right in the middle of it, and you're the next victim. Oh, I hate this already. Fuck me so much! Bloody hell! Fuck! Fuck me! Shit! Oh, good God. Do you reckon it is to scare people? Obviously, in there, it looks rather easy. Now let's find out how much work it actually takes to run a scare attraction. It's time to go behind the screams. We're here backstage with General Manager Aaron Byrne Carter. What are the top three things to make a scare attraction successful? Okay, top three things. Number one, of course, has to be a, uh, a good show. 
Yeah, it's going to be a good show. You have the majority of your customers coming out coming out scared. We do have around about, I'd say about 98% of our customers are scared. I'd say 100%, but you've got some people who just, you know, one to three, we call them museum groups. That leads on to number two, which to have a scary attraction, you've got to have uh, good actors. So the actors are really important. And number three, location. We're a global company, as you know anyway, we've got attractions all around the world, so it's funded through each of our other attractions. We're the only scare attraction in the world that can say that we are globally renowned, call us the, the McDonald's of the, the scare industry. Our main advertisement at the moment is our is a social social marketing. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the funding, especially in this area, to be able to do too much external advertising. It is really costly. Our Blackpool One has, in its 11 years, still now has around about 300,000 people entering the attraction each year, has never advertised. Well, it has in its first year, in its opening year, but since then it's never invested in advertisement. And it's just word of mouth, you know, people going in the past, saying, oh, I've heard of that, is that the one where they come out running into a bar? Oh, yeah, that's where people skate. If people, I mean, the past is synonymous with this, with this area anyway. I'd like to say, in terms of new characters, we have potentially one famous character from the Japanese horror industry that's going to be joining us. All right, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Now, not only do you need good management to run an attraction, you need good actors. But before we talk to them, let's find out how they get into character and costume. No, that was that was so scary! Oh my gosh! That was the terrifying thing I have ever done. I'm going. Oh, oh. yeah. We're here in the centre of the attraction where the staff room is located. It's here where the actors can hang out and relax between groups of visitors. As it's in the middle, it means the location of the group can be determined just by where the sound is coming from. When they're ready to leave, they exit via the shortcuts and passageways nearest to their location to get into position. Now behind me, some of the actors are getting ready, getting their costumes on and applying their makeup. And over here, you can see some of the scary items they have, like masks, weapons and terrifying costumes. I've been uh, classically trained as an actor and uh, in London it's quite hard to become an actor just like that so I thought I'd ease myself into it by uh, finding uh, an attraction based job where I could put my skills to some use. Uh, it just so happens to be that um, most of the ones that are uh, around London are all scare attractions. Uh, the people here are really friendly, uh, it's great to uh, get the reactions from the audience and mainly the girls are the best to, to have because they, they love to scream and. Uh, they're, they're usually the best to um, to get a good scare out of some. Uh, my favourite character is playing Frankenstein here because you're in a cage and no matter whether they're being scared all the way through the attraction or they're trying to be brave, uh, there's a point where you throw open the cage door and that gets everybody. Everybody runs away from that moment so that's probably my best, my favourite character to uh, play. At the moment we're starting around 4 o'clock and going onwards into the night depending how on busy it is, some nights we might close at half 9 some nights we might close at 12, so it, it all depends. Have you been through the attraction like, yourself? Like? I did, yeah, just before I came through. But I didn't really take it in because I was trying to look at you know, how I would be in, in doing these sort of situations. But it, it does get scary. You think you might not be scared, but as soon as somebody's banging a spade behind you, it, it becomes slightly nerve-wracking. Obviously, without live actors, you wouldn't have a very good attraction, would you? It's their job to keep the patrons on their toes, and surprise and scare them when they least expect it. Having the actors perform recognisable roles from famous horror films boosts the interaction guest experience while going throughout the attraction. That not only boosts the fear level, but it also makes it nearly impossible for them to work out what's waiting around the corner. Sorry, that's about all we have time for today. As you've seen, there's lots of work that goes on behind the scenes to make a scare attraction run smoothly and successfully. It's still an industry that's growing throughout the UK, and it's hard to open a business like this. Join us next time when we'll be looking at Tom Spindler's new attraction, Masks. Here's a sneak peek of what to expect next time on Behind the Screams. Goodbye.